Well, I think Audrey makes some good points about this issue about privacy and trust. Um, I want to go back, I think, to what the goal is with open education, because open education, to some extent, has this public mission. And by public, I mean it in the old sense. The public means universal, that it's not restricted to some subgroup uh, uh, of of users, people, students, that it's available to everybody. So the whole universal access piece of public of uh, open education is really based on this notion that there's a public good in higher education that and that all universities have this as part of their mission and that the the goal of open education is to help them extend that access. So there's a few issues. One is that just because we say that there's a public mission doesn't excuse us from any and all practices. So the issue of, of privacy rights is, uh, is a very clear thing. In fact, with, with open, a lot of the open courseware sites that began in the 2000s, they, they didn't capture anything. They weren't capturing email addresses even. And we used to have this discussion as to whether it was okay to capture an email address uh, to communicate with people who were the users of these open education websites. So uh, now we've relaxed a little bit, but that of course also brings into the question of what about all the various technologies. So open education has become more than just content. Now open education is uh, also often tool sets. Uh, you don't get to disassociate the the tools that were that went into building some simulation that may become part of an open educational project, um, or the the way in which users communicate with each other, all of which you know often involve some lack of anonymity for sure, but also the ability to be traced. But I think that that we want to get back to this issue of trust. So you know again, I'll, I'll give an example in my uh, in my daughter's elementary school. She was picking out a book, and she was told to pick out a book with a green dot, which represents her reading group. And she came up with a book that had a blue dot on, on it, which was one level more advanced. And she was told not to take that, take a book with a green dot. So I don't actually have a lot of trust that the elementary school has her individual interests at heart as much as they do global issues around test scores and uh, and reputation for the school as a whole. So what we do at home may be actually different than what they do in the reading program at school. And so this issue of trust is not blind trust. It's trust in the sense that it's trust in the sense that there's an alignment of the mission of the institution with what the user is experiencing. And so uh, the other the other discussion we used to have uh, that isn't around so much anymore, although it comes up now and then, is whether this open course where the MOOCs and so forth are really just uh, marketing vehicles for the universities. And so the issue that we always try to separate out is no matter what benefit to the institution accrued by the offering of open courses, that the requirement on us, a moral requirement at the, at the least, but also even a reputational requirement, was that what we were offering to users, to the end user, to the learners, was an educational treatment. At its heart, it was an educational treatment. And so long as we were fulfilling that, if there is a benefit to the institution, it was aligned with what we were doing. It, we, were say, we weren't... Um, uh, we weren't in some way um, using the learner base, the, the tens of thousands of people who come to our site and who use it repeatedly in some cases. So we've talked about how the idea that there's this public mission to open education. And it's particularly important to remember that in an, in an era in which in Europe and in the U.S., you have significant cutbacks in the funding of public uh, educational institutions for sure, uh, and other public institutions as well. 
So open education, of course, has as its goal this idea that everybody should have access, that the idea that knowledge is exclusive privilege of some subgroup in society is something we want to dispense with. And so that, in that sense, we maintain that issue of trust. Um, that is, that so long as we are, we are again aligned with that mission, we are maintain. We should be maintaining the trust of the users in in what we are doing. The minute that we deviate from that, and there's some private uh, mission that we're actually on, then it becomes problematic. The the so again, you know, it, trust is two things. One is there's there's a there's a branch I'd say in open education that says the goal of all of this is really to be able to do things yourself, and they say it to different degrees. So it may be that, uh, for example, I was involved uh, a number of a few years ago with peer-to-peer -peer university, and they put out the idea that courses were to be built by communities of users. Now, what I actually like about that is this whole notion of these online communities, because then it's not an individual do-it-yourself project, but rather there's feedback, there's there's a, a group to go to support it. But we, we can also get a little bit crazy with the idea of do-it-yourself do projects in higher education. There's a reason why universities have curriculum committees, why they, uh, they agonize over whether they're they're up to date, whether they're, uh, and they struggle to, to, to maintain it so that what they're offering is the best possible for their students. And so I don't think you can have blind trust in anyone, in institutions, in government, et cetera. But I think also this notion that the opposite is to become paranoid about them and to think that there's only some ulterior motive. And so we try to strike this this balance in open education. It's the, it's the notion that we are enabling individual learners to learn at their own pace without any financial re, uh, requirements and so forth and so on, wherever they are, whatever their circumstances are. But we also want to uh, make sure that we're, um, that what we're doing get, continues to gain support by institutions to produce the best out there possible. Um, and to do that, we have to in some way say that we, we uh, uh, as difficult as it may be, we, we want to make sure that that we have some level of trust in, in that, uh, in, in that process. There are other issues about whether you can trust content. I mean, content can be outdated. It can be, um, and whether content itself is the same as learning. So I think that the future of open education is gonna be this idea of large communities, which we haven't done very well. I, I have to say that in all of this, the, the ability to trust in something is based on the fact that there's, uh, there are people, there are known people behind it and so forth uh, that, that, that have earned your trust. And what we have to do is, is build out these large communities that can be trusted so that, for example, somebody studying some subject which is being studied elsewhere around the world is able to find themselves in a community with responsible people leading it in a very organized fashion. So that what we see as the future in this is that we will continue to have these institutions, uh, that uh, the uh, institutions of higher education but we should also be building out simultaneously the informal sector that, uh, that essentially supports the learning at a given institution. So as, as the old phrase goes, you should trust, but you should verify. So you have multiple sources of support as you go throughout your learning path and that you're not alone in that. And I think that's the promise of open education and that's the point to which you, your your privacy rights uh, are separate from being anonymous because ultimately you're going to be out there and you're going to be a known quantity if you want to have if you want other people to trust you. So I hope this gives some some thoughts on the subject and uh, thanks to Jonathan for the opportunity to speak to you today.